And before we start off with questions, I know somebody's gonna ask. This is my birthmark. It looks good. It looks like a fighter thing, but uh, just born with it. Uh, you said it when you walked back here, and you know we're unbiased and everything else. But you're right, though. We didn't expect to see you back here. Yeah. Tell, t take us through that and like what kind of a massive upset that just was. So this is the thing with my career. I started out 0-2. I fought Treshawn Gore and I fought Derek Overstreet, both big 85ers. Well, I was training four hours a week with my dad at the house. You know, like I did good as an amateur because I'm tough. Like I've just always been a fighter. My dad was a fighter and everything. So uh, amateur career, I did okay. And then I was like, you know, this promoter said, hey, man, go pro and I'll pay you. Of course, I'm 18, 19 years old, or I was 19, and I was like, yeah, dude, I'll go pro, pay me. So I go pro, I fight two bad guys that I shouldn't have fought, didn't have a real good coach. I mean, my dad was just kind of like, fight everybody. So um, everybody looks at my record, and they're like, oh, he's two and two, three and two now. But uh, I was two and two, so like, everybody looked at me as a scrub, but what they didn't understand was when I changed my life around, and I stopped doing the stupid things I was doing, and I found God, I started training six hours per day. You know, I'm training all the time. And my last two fights, I have a total of 55 seconds in total, like through both fights. Um, and just nobody sees that. They look at two and two, they're like, ah, oh, we'll get this scrub in here. He'll fight Pat Downey. Pat Downey will whoop his butt. Go on with the day. That's not the case. And I'm here to show everybody I am not to be played with. So when you see stuff like that, like, I don't know if you look at betting odds and stuff like that, but. He was a 15 to 1 favorite. I mean, in, in, oh, it's hard not to see that. In the MMA world, that's just, that's massive, right? Yes. Sir. So, does that put a chip on your shoulder as you're getting ready for a fight? Uh, does it not bother you? I mean, t take me through that part of it. So, it really didn't bother me. You know, I had, I have a huge following. Like, I live in a smaller town, it's growing tremendously. And, like, all the counties around my uh, county in Alabama, all these surrounding counties, they're all behind me. And they're like, hey, dude, I know you're an underdog. I believe in you. And just hearing that repetitively all the time in this small community, man, it just like, it keeps you up. You're just like, screw the internet. Screw Joe down the road that put me at a 15 to 1 underdog. I can do this, and I know I can. And man, I just got hard. I, I train my butt off every day with Matt Scaff, Matt Elkins, and Travis Thomas, and a group of other guys, but those are my main three. And man, they pushed me to my absolute limits. That choke he put me in, it was tight. I was wheezing, I, uh, and I was like, I ain't giving up. I refuse to lose. And that, that's when the underdog did come in. I said, screw that, and I fought out of it. I was gonna ask about that because obviously he came out similar way of his first pro fight just boom you're on the ground you're in his world what's going through your mind at that point and are you like ah, oh, you know this is this was potentially my biggest fear in this fight was that he would do that to me and just be able to take over from there so just to be honest with you the only fear i had coming into this fight was pat's big ass getting on top of me and holding me down and beating on me that was the one thing i had in the back of my head was don't let that big strong son of a gun on top and uh Man, I just, I wasn't gonna give up. I, I really wasn't. I didn't want him there, but you know, it's kind of hard to get him off. So I had to find scrambles and try to hold him down, not let him pound on my head. And I found a way to the top. He hit that choke, it got deep, and I just, I had to dog my way out of it. Right over there. Yeah, I just wanted to ask that. Yeah, I mean, it looked like he was going for that gator roll a couple times. I mean, how, I mean, were you, were you thinking about tapping, or like, how deep was it? So it was deep, it was, it was really deep, and uh, you know, the, he hit, like, I think it was the second gate roll, maybe, maybe the first, I can't remember, yeah. but I felt him, I almost felt his base give away just a little, almost like he was like, exerting a lot of energy on the choke. And, I, and a lot of people don't know this, man. I'm, I don't want to say this about myself and sound cocky, but I'm a good jiu-jitsu guy. I train with some of the best coaches and the best guys in the world, and they come in all the time to uh, 10th Planet Decatur with Brandon McCaffron. So my jiu-jitsu is good, and like, I guess they're starting to see it now. I mean, uh, my last two fights, super quick uh, submissions. And, but anyways, I got a feel for the game of jiu-jitsu. And I felt his base get a little off. It wasn't much, but it got a little off. And I felt like he got, it, didn't, it wasn't quite as strong. So I was like, if I can pop this elbow loose, I can go. And I fought the elbow, fought the elbow, fought the elbow. Finally, it popped off, and I jumped up, and I was ready. And from there, I was like, oh, we in a fight. Uh, this week, uh, I seen a bunch of interviews from them. We interviewed them. Uh, people were asking them about... Bo Nickel, people are asking him about Alex Payer. Not many people are asking about you. I, I know, you know, you kind of mentioned the media and the fans overlooked him. Do you think he might have overlooked you? 
I do in a sense. So like Pat Downey, I've been watching Pat wrestle for a while now. You know, I watched him with Gordon Ryan. I watched him with Nicky Rod. I watched him, and that's when I really heard about him. I heard a little bit here and there, but I just really started hearing about him. And like, I mean, when this fight, like, I think he could have worked harder because Pat Downey is a very talented wrestler. He's a talented athlete. I am too, but I'm just saying, I feel like, I, I don't usually follow my opponents, but man, with a guy like Pat Downey as my opponent, I was watching a lot. I had my friends looking at you. Know, I had everybody watching. It sounds stupid and childish, whatever, but like, I just wanted to see how hard he was working. I knew what I was doing. So I do believe that he could probably work a little harder and he could do something in this game. Because, I mean, he's, he's just a talented dude. All right, here, right, Aldrick Warner from the Fight Dialogue. Like you said, man, you're a huge underdog now. Your following is about to increase. You're about to be a big name right now. You're trending all over social media that you gave Pat down his first MMA loss and upset of the year. Way to end the year, man. Just talk to me like your humble beginnings to like now your now upcoming stardom and fame. Like just tells me this process you're going to have to deal with now. So if you asked me that question three years ago, two years ago, I would have just in my inside, I would have been like, oh, I don't know, man. That's a lot, you know. But like, I'm here. All the big dogs, 85, possibly gonna try 70, I don't know for sure yet. But y'all, I'm coming. I'm here to stay. I love, like I, for a long time I wasn't ready for this kind of attention, but like I'm here and like I know what I'm capable of. I train with some of the best guys around. So I'm just putting all y'all on notice. I may not knock you out, I may submit you. And you're probably not gonna out wrestle me. So like, we'll see how it goes when I see you. <laughs> Good man. And uh, my last question for you is now. I just I had to, my last question for you now is, um, what's what's next for you, man? Like, you know, are you gonna take a little bit of time off, or are you looking to get back in there right away? <clears throat> so I just recently found out getting ready for this fight. I got a little bit of something going on in my head. It's just a little spot. Um, so they're gonna put me on a suspension for just a little bit until I can give them a MRI of my brain with contrast. Um, just so that like for their safe or for my safety and like their company deals. Um, so I'm going to get that taken care of, get through Christmas with my little girl um, and just come back whenever they say I can. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm fully ready to take on whatever comes with it. Oh man, congratulations. Thank you, sir.